everyone welcome to dentus and what do you see in the mouth of a newborn do you see any teeth there no there are no teeth but there are pink fibrous gums one in maxilla and one in mandible and these are called gum pads and this stage is called gum pad stage which is from 0 to 6 months of life because at 6 months our first primary teeth that is mandibular central incisors they start to erupt and by the age of 2 and a half years all the primary teeth are there in the mouth and they remain in mouth till 6 years of age when bigger larger permanent teeth they start to replace them so from 6 years to 12 years of life which is called mixed dentition period because we have both primary and permanent teeth so mixed teeth are there but by the age of 12 years all these primary teeth get replaced by permanent and now it is called permanent dentition period that is from 12 years and beyond so we can say that our journey is divided into four stages first stage is called gum pad stage which is also called pre dented period pre means before dented means teeth second is primary dentition third is mixed dentition and fourth is permanent dentition period during all these period there has to be some type of contact between the maxillary and mandibular then only they can carry out various functions also some type of para functional movements are also there for example night grinding of teeth you might have observed in some people that they grind their teeth while sleeping in the night and this habit is called bruxism so during all these functional and para functional movement there is a type of contact relationship between the teeth maxillary and mandibular teeth and this relationship is called occlusion so that is the simplest explanation of occlusion but the concept of occlusion varies according to the different specialties of the dentistry but here we are going to talk about occlusion in context to dental anatomy for bds first year so we have divided this topic into two parts so today we are going to take part 1 so let's start before starting quickly subscribe to dentus and and also give a like to this video as i keep making such interesting videos for you so first we are going to discuss the meaning and definition of occlusion then how it is in the pre dented primary mixed and permanent dentition period and how the occlusion in one period affects the occlusion in next period what can be the clinical implications in each period that is what can go wrong in each period so we are going to take first three in today's video that is occlusion part 1 and the remaining will be taken in the second video that is occlusion part 2 so don't forget to watch that video as well so first the meaning the simplest meaning is it is act of closure or being closed when teeth contact so the definition is it is the contact relationship of the teeth in function or para function so these two points are there and the maxillary and mandibular teeth not only contact in occlusion but there are various factors which are playing the role here so we can say that the modern concept of occlusion is an integral related concept which involves not only teeth but there is also involvement of the joint temporomandibular joint muscles of mastication so it is not a static concept only that is the teeth contact not only during rest position but also during various movements so we can say that the concept of occlusion is a dynamic concept so let's see in the pre dented period when there are no teeth what is there there are gum pads so here you get your viva question that is what the shape of maxillary gum pad it is horseshoe shape the shape of mandibular gum pad it is u shape so that is why our question these are pink foam fibrous structures and they have various lateral sulci grooves this lateral sulci is the one which is present between the canine and the molar regions and so if we look at these gum pads from the side from of the face we can say that maxillary one is larger than mandibular and they contact only in the posterior region that is in the back region and in the front region anterior region they do not contact so in the anterior region we have open bite and what is the clinical implication normally there are no teeth in this in this period but sometimes teeth may be present within these gum pads which are present since birth then they are called natal teeth or they may arise within the first month of life then they are called neonatal teeth so those are your viva questions next important viva question would be which are the most common natal and neonatal teeth so which one do you think it is the mandibular incisors so that is viva question Now let's see the occlusion in primary dentition. Primary dentition period starts with the eruption of the first primary tooth, that is central incisor. Along with that, we also have lateral incisor, canine, first molar, and second molar. These are denoted by alphabets A, B, C, D, E, and E respectively. So there are five. deciduous teeth or five primary teeth in each quadrant so total 20 teeth and they remain in mouth till 6 years of age so primary dentition period is from 6 months to 6 years of age and as a general rule the mandibular primary teeth they precede that is they come before the maxillary primary teeth but then there is an exception that is maxillary lateral incisors they erupt before the mandibular lateral incisors so let's see the chronology of eruption chronology means timing of eruption of these primary teeth 
थ्री सो मीन एज ऑफ इरप्शन इज गिवन बट देन देयर कैन बी वेरिएशन ऑफ प्लस माइनस सिक्स मंथ्स दैट इज देयर कैन बी एक्सेलरेशन और डिले ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स बिकॉज इट डिपेंड्स ऑन वेरियस फैक्टर्स सो विच इज द फर्स्ट वन टू अराइज यू ऑलरेडी नो इट इज द मैंडिबुलर विच वन मैंडिबुलर द सेंट्रल इनसाइजर सो मैंडिबुलर सेंट्रल इनसाइजर फॉलोड बाई मैगजिलरी सेंट्रल इनसाइजर देन वॉट अबाउट लैटरल इनसाइजर मैगजिलरी विल कम फर्स्ट सो देन मैगजिलरी लैटरल इनसाइजर एंड देन मैंडिबुलर लैटरल इनसाइजर नाउ आफ्टर द इरप्शन ऑफ इनसाइजर्स विच विल बी द नेक्स्ट नाउ द फर्स्ट मोलर्स विल इरप्ट येस सो फर्स्ट मोलर्स विल कम फर्स्ट एंड देन कैन आइंस एंड देन द सेकेंड मोलर्स सो इफ वी लुक एट द टाइमिंग सो वी कैन से दैट द मैंडिबुलर सेंट्रल इनसाइजर आर द वंस विच कम फर्स्ट एट एट मंथ्स ऑफ एज देन मैगजिलरी सेंट्रल इनसाइजर एट टेन मंथ ऑफ एज फॉलोड बाई मैगजिलरी लैटरल इनसाइजर एट इलेवन मंथ एंड देन द मैंडिबुलर लैटरल इनसाइजर एट थर्टीन मंथ्स so after the eruption of incisors which ones are the next the first molar so first molars they erupt at 16 months of age followed by canines so 19 and 20 months and then the second deciduous molars that is at 27 months and 29 months now the another important viva question that can be the sequence of eruption now sequence is different from chronology sequence means the order in which they come that is order in which different types of teeth incisors canines and molars come so we already know so the first one to come are the central incisors incisor then lateral incisor then first molar canine and second molar so it is a b d c e for both maxilla and mandible so that is the sequence or the order of eruption so chronology and sequence so those can be the viva questions now what are the characteristics of these primary teeth so there are three things which we need to know overjet and overbite relationship of these teeth then the spaces which are present in between these teeth and the relationship of the last molars that is second deciduous molars how they are aligned with each other the maxillary and the mandibular second deciduous molars so let's first see the overjet and overbite which can be an important short note so let's first see what is overjet if we look at the primary anterior teeth incisors from the side view so we can say that labial incisal edge of the maxillary teeth so this is maxillary incisor it's labial incisal edge this is the labial incisal edge it and the labial surface of mandibular incisor so this is the labial surface of mandibular incisor so in between these two points we can see a horizontal distance so this horizontal distance is called overjet horizontal remember the term overjet is horizontal distance so it is also seen in the posterior teeth that is maxillary molars are out outside the mandibular molar so the horizontal distance is present between them normally it is 0 to 4 mm in the primary teeth now let's talk about the second term that is overbite overbite is vertical overlap vertical in vertical direction so if we look at the maxillary teeth so they overlap these mandibular teeth in a vertical direction so how do we look at this from the incisal edges of the opposing teeth so this is the incisal edge of the maxillary and this is the incisal edge of mandible so in between them there is a vertical overlap so this is called the overbite so overjet is horizontal overbite is vertical now let's see what can be the clinical implication normally overjet and overbite are there in the deciduous teeth but what if your child has a habit of thumb sucking if the, this thumb will go between these two teeth and the distance will increase between these two teeth so horizontal distance will also increase and also these two teeth will now not contact in the vertical direction so if we look at these teeth from the front so their space will be there between the maxillary anterior and mandibular anterior teeth and this is called open bite so the mouth of the child will remain open so that is the clinical implication that is in this period with a habit like thumb and digit sucking king it can lead to increased overjet horizontal distance and anterior open bite now the coming to the second characteristic that is spaces in the primary teeth so normally spaces are there we need spaces in primary teeth why let's see so these normal spaces are called physiological or developmental spaces they are of two types first is generalized spacing that is they are generally present between all the deciduous teeth then second one is localized spacing that is present in certain locations that is in maxilla it is present between the lateral incisor and canine and in the mandible it is present between the canine and the first molar so we can say that in maxilla this is present mesial to the canine that is in the mesial direction and in the mandible it is present distal to the canine that is in the distal direction 
सो दीज लोकलाइज स्पेसिस आर कॉल्ड प्राइमेट स्पेसिस और सीनियन स्पेसिस और एंथ्रोपॉइड स्पेसिस प्राइमेट बिकॉज दे आर ऑल्सो सीनियन प्राइमेट्स एंड दिस इज अ शॉर्ट नोट फॉर योर एग्जाम सो दीज स्पेसिस आर सीन ओनली इन प्राइमरी डेंटिशन इंसिडेंस इज सेवेंटी परसेंट इन मैक्सिल एंड सिक्सटी थ्री परसेंट इन मैंडेबल इन मैक्सिल इट इज बिटवीन द लैटरल इन साइजर एंड केनाइन सो मीजियल टू केनाइन इट इज वन पॉइंट सेवन मिलीमीटर इन मैंडेबल इट इज बिटवीन द केनाइन एंड फर्स्ट मोडर सो इट इज डिस्टल टू केनाइन एंड इट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलीमीटर नो वट इज द क्लिनिकल इम्प्लीकेशन नॉर्मली वी नीड दीज स्पेसिस बट इफ दीज स्पेसिस आर नॉट देयर इट विल लीड टू क्राउडिंग ऑफ द टी टीथ विल ओवरलैप ईच अदर एंड ऑल्सो देर आर इंक्रीज चांसिस ऑफ क्राउडिंग इन द परमानेंट टीथ वाई बिकॉज परमानेंट एंटीरियर टी द आर्च लेंथ विल नॉट इंक्रीज एंटीरियर टू द सेकेंड मोलर्स सो हाउ दीज बिगर लार्जर परमानेंट टीथ विल अकोमोडेट सो दे विल यूज दीज स्पेसिस प्रेजेंट इन द प्राइमरी टीथ बट इफ द स्पेसिस आर नॉट देयर सो दे विल गेट क्राउडेड दे विल ओवरलैप ईच अदर विच विल अफेक्ट द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द टीथ सो दैट इज द क्लिनिकल इम्प्लीकेशन क्राउडिंग ऑफ नॉट देयर नाउ द थर्ड फीचर थर्ड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दैट इज हाउ द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द सेकेंड मोलर्स बैगजिलरी एंड नॉन्डिबल हाउ देयर डिस्टल प्लेन दैट इज द लास्ट प्लेन डिस्टल प्लेन इज इन लाइन विद ईच अदर लेट सी डेसिडस के नाइन डेसिडस फर्स्ट मोलर्स एंड डेसिडस सेकेंड मोलर्स सो फ्रॉम बिलो देर विल बी रप्शन ऑफ द परमानेंट टीथ एंड फ्रॉम बिहाइंड ऑन द डिस्टल साइड देर विल बी परमानेंट फर्स्ट मोलर्स विच विल अरप्ट नाउ द डिस्टल प्लेन ऑफ द मैगजिलरी डिस्टल प्लेन ऑफ द मैगजिलरी सेकेंड डेसिडस मोलर एंड डिस्टल प्लेन ऑफ द मैंडिबुलर सेकेंड डेसिडस मोलर दो आर कॉल्ड द टर्मिनल प्लेन terminal means at the end because they are the last plane so their relationship between these two planes between their distal surfaces of maxillary and mandibular second primary molars is called terminal plane relationship so normally they are in one line so that is called flush terminal plane or straight terminal plane so when, as we can see here they are in one line so why they it happens because the mandibular molar is larger in size compared to the maxillary molar so because of which its distal plane comes in line with the maxillary molar so that is called flush terminal plane so why it is important to know the terminal plane relationship because from behind permanent first molars will come so these molars how they will come how they will contact each other how their occlusal occlusal relationship will be established will depend upon the distal plane of these deciduous molars so that is why it is important to determine this terminal plane relationship in primary or deciduous teeth because it guide the erupting first permanent molars into occlusion so according to molars three types of terminal planes can be there one we already see when the distal planes of both are in one line it is called flush terminal but what if the distal plane of the mandibular is in mesial direction that is it is ahead of the distal plane of the maxillary then it is called mesial step and if the distal plane of the mandibular is distal to the maxillary then it is called distal step so flush terminal plane when both planes are in same line mesial step when the mandibular plane is mesial to maxillary plane and distal step when the mandibular plane is in distal to maxillary plane so and what is the clinical implication that is this plane guides the eruption of the permanent first molar so they have role in the development of occlusion in the permanent teeth now let's have this summary so meaning and definition pre dentate primary dentition mixed dentition and permanent dentition period so what is occlusion it is the contact relationship of teeth in function or para function in pre dentate period we have gum pads horseshoe shaped maxillary u shaped mandibular and they contact in the posterior region anteriorly there is open bite clinical implication there can be natal and neonatal teeth then in primary dentition period we need to know three things overjet and overbite spaces in dentition and relationship of the terminal planes so overjet is horizontal distance between teeth and overbite is the vertical overlap clinical implication if child has thumb sucking habit at this stage it can lead to increased horizontal distance increased overjet and anterior open bite then what about the spaces two types physiological generalized physiological spacing and the localized spaces which are called primate spaces spaces are required why because if they are not there they can lead to crowding of the permanent teeth that is the clinical implication then relationship of the terminal planes normally the distal terminal plane of maxillary and mandibular second deciduous molar they are in line that is called flush terminal plane but what if the mandibular distal plane is in the mesial to the maxillary then it is called mesial step if the mandibular distal plane is distal to the maxillary then it is called distal step so this plane relationship is important because they will be that plane relationship relationship guides the permanent first molars and that will help in the development of occlusion in the permanent teeth so we are going to discuss mixed dentition and permanent dentition the occlusion in these periods in the part 2 video so don't forget to watch that so let's check what have you learned so what is occlusion occlusion is the contact relationship of teeth in which two conditions primate spaces are seen where in maxilla and where in mandible what is overjet and what is overbite so that's all for this video if you enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling Good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye